I don't know about you, but I've become rather disillusioned with artificial intelligence. Text generation is meh, fact-checking meh, images meh. And what are companies doing about it? They're just making their models bigger. It's like particle physics. If it doesn't work, do the same thing again, but bigger. Meh. There's been one thing that people told me AI is genuinely good for writing computer code. But several studies have now appeared which looked at this and the news aren't good. Let's have a look. In the past years, I've heard quite a few software engineers say that the future of software development is coding in English. Young people won't have to learn how to code and everyone's a software developer now. The first time I heard about this, my reaction was meh. That's because I think about computer code as mathematics, not as spoken language. Code has strict rules and precise definitions. If you throw a lot of code together and feed it into a large language model, it's like handing gourmet recipes to a fast food chain you just know the result will be deep fried. This happens just the same way that these models blur out how we individually use words, each with slightly different meaning, and then they create one common hodgepodge that lumps us all together with mediocre results. The idea that you can convert something as vague and imprecise as human language into code just didn't make sense to me. But I'm not a software engineer and I saw some demos that honestly impressed me. I also personally know people who told me that ChatGPT is saving them tons of time by spitting out Python code that they can just copy and paste. And I've no reason to doubt it. So this was quite a wake up call for me. Just a few weeks ago, a group of computer scientists published the results of a study that evaluates the impact of generative AI on software development productivity. They did three random control trials that, among other places, were conducted at Microsoft. In the abstract, they say that using generative AI in software development increased productivity by 26%. When you look at the paper more closely, though, it turns out that by productivity, they mean the number of pull requests. This sounds like an unpleasant conversation with a dentist, but what it means is that a change or addition to the code is ready to be pulled into the main project. The reason this is the task they mentioned in the abstract is, as they explain in the paper, only the effect on the number of pull requests is statistically significant at conventional significance levels. If you break it down by junior and senior level, then at the senior level, there's barely any gains. And this is one of the better findings. Another recent study from Uplevel followed 800 developers from January to April this year. They found no significant changes in efficiency, but a 41% increase in bugs. Another Another study from GitClear says that the most market change they've seen is a steep increase in copy and paste operations and more mistakes in the code that later have to be fixed. And an earlier study found that coders who use AI write less secure code basically because they trust AI too much. That doesn't sound all that great. So. What does that mean now? There are probably some coding tasks that large language models are good for, but it seems that they're much more rare than we wished and hoped. The current models are useful to get novices up to speed, and that's good. But beyond that, they're mostly providing advanced templates that have to be adjusted, frequently so much that skilled coders are better off just doing it themselves. It's not the game changer it's been made out to be. One of the most plausible applications is probably the design of websites with standard elements. This type of application already exists just for your entertainment. This is an example in which I've used a platform called Wix to generate a website for my great upcoming pet grooming salon. And here's the website it has generated, all including images for bunny harnesses, a book that doesn't exist, and fake customer reviews. This meh result 
of generative AI, including, supports the skepticism from some reports earlier this year, which said that the economic impact of AI in the near future has been vastly overestimated and that consequently most AI companies are currently overvalued. These new studies won't reassure investors. I still think there's a real possibility that AI capabilities will make a significant jump in the near future and will get to human level intelligence rather suddenly. But at the moment, using AI is like using a chainsaw to cut butter. It gets the job done, but someone's got to clean up the mess. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.